Hey, Don here again. I'm uh, trying to record my desktop using the GTK GUI version uh, front end for it. Uh, this is a SourceForge page for it. I'm uh, trying to get the audio to sync and the uh, audio and video to sync and the audio to not drop out. Here's some of the pages. There's a setup page uh, for using Jack, and then at the bottom it mentions ALSA, which is what I'm using. Uh, the default audio application for uh, input and output application for Fedora to Linux. Here's some more uh, the man, man, the man, uh, manual page, the man page. It's got some good information in there. You can run it in the terminal or you can run it from the GUI. There's a QT version also besides the GTK in a graphic version. I've done a bunch of tests from yesterday and today. <coughs> I've used this on and off over the years since well 2005 when I first uh, discovered Linux. Started with uh, Fedora 5 and I'm on, on uh, 23 now. Uh, 2016 here. Um, I used a lot in Fedora 14, which I still have that system uh, on another machine. But uh, I played around with the, uh, the settings back and forth, back and forth. Right now, this this one right here that it's recording right now is set at. Uh, I'm trying to get it to do record on the fly instead of having to wait for it to render. <coughs> and uh, it will work with uh, fairly well uh, after. 20 minutes or so, your, your audio and video starts getting out of sync usually on uh, if you let it record it and then render it afterwards. But uh, with record on the fly, it's a whole, I don't know if it's going to work. Uh, and I could never could get it to work on my older system, my Core 2 system. This is a quad core I, Lenovo i5 with uh, about 2.2 gigahertz Intel. Just has a small video chip. It shares the RAM, about 200, I think about 200 megabytes of RAM uh, goes for the video. So this thing will actually slow down and even lock up if you use play videos for two or three hours, watching YouTube or something. So uh, anything that's using a lot of video is going to be a problem for this machine. But it does have a we've got a scene right right now. I'm re doing my recording. That's the less I've seen it do. CPU is only 17% overall, 18. Using 20. Uh, memory 23.7 megabytes out of 3.7 gigabytes so you know that's not a problem um, it uh, should work but it I ha uh, it's counterintuitive to make the uh, to me to make the uh, video sync I finally realized that the default was 15 frames per second. Well, I'm used to use trying to get 30 frames per second. That, that's that's for many years has been the standard video rate. You know, good good frame rate and uh, st standard with you know VCRs and uh, all the way up into the first digital cameras. You know, now you can get up to 60, even 100 something frames per second. But uh, the Super HD and all this stuff, and I don't know. I guess 100 frames might be for 4K. But anyway. Uh, I don't have any of that, and uh, of course this is desktop recording, not cameras. So, but anyway, these principles have always been pretty much the same, like when using a web camera or whatever. But with this, I finally realized that dropping down the uh, frame rate to uh, 10 frames per second made the audio and video sync on some of these videos I made here. That one says it's working. Okay, on the, I, I named it to tell me what's happened. You know, on my results. Uh, but then I just went to make another video, and uh, well, this is not working. Yeah, audio video audio dropped out. I thought I, was, I thought I was all good. This one here, the oh yeah, okay. This one here, the video and audio was in sync throughout the whole thing. That was at 10 frames per second. Uh, and rendering on the fly 
but not catching every frame letting it automatically kind of what it does is when you're not moving it doesn't catch video frames and when you're moving things around then it catches them uh, but the audio dropped out on me uh, so I don't I've read and read and I haven't figured out what's happening or really a fix a lot of people have that problem so and I've, I remember it from all the way back the only way I ever got it to work was to go uh, and let it render I do it the other way so this may be just be something that ain't, isn't going to work. Uh, that test said uh, not wor sync not working. Audio worked to the end on that one. That was at 15. Oh, I can't even remember. I wore my brain out doing this today. I've been doing it all day. So <clears throat> I guess I'll quit after. I need to quit after this one. My. Uh, A, a older machine. I'll just go into it that way. I can show. I can show and tell, but I can't just tell. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. I'm getting too tired to do anything, aren't I? Okay, I'm gonna go and VNC into my other machine that's still trying to render off, uh, a re-render a failed one. Render. That's one of the biggest problems. Uh. Yeah, it's still working. I can see that because it's system resources are it's working at 50% of the processing power. It still says after 7 hours and 30 minutes or so, because I started at noon or before, 2%, uh, and it's on cache file 2. I'll show you what that means. Uh, and this is the folder that it's working from. This one has IMG out, and then it has 1, and then 2. So. Uh, one thing I don't get is the first one didn't have a dot out, so this could may not be, but it is a 500 megabyte file, so that makes me think it's a video file. It's not just like a file telling it what to do. It actually this file telling it there's a text file in here that tells information about the video, and I think well it tells it does tell the renderer how to work. See. It, uh, Name of the the version of my this of my application 0.3.8.1 with the video 1920 by 1072 and then the file name and the location and uh, if that folder is not there then it won't work I found that out so you need to make sure it says in a case sensitive G G T K whatever you've given it I made that folder it na no normally goes to temp but if you let it go there, then you want, if it fails, you've lost your your cache files. So I learned that a long time ago. So anyway, uh, and the PCM file, it's not real big, but anyway, you've got it's 1.4 gigabytes. I remember that uh, total. Uh, I did render a smaller one earlier today on my neural system, and it took less than five minutes. Worked just fine. So, but I I, <coughs> I didn't want to do that on the machine I'm working on uh, th because it, then it kind of as you can see on this machine it uses 50 percent of the total resources this is only a core 2 you know so but it, it's really you can't I've tried this before many times and you can't really work with it running like that I mean you, you try to r run the web browser as a matter of fact if you keep working you know using email and your Thunderbird and Firefox and it'll, it can end up jacking up the render so I'm just this that's all this machine's doing. It's just rendering that video while I'm working on the other one, <coughs> other machine. But I get tired of listening to it, and it, so luckily it's a cool day, and I got the window open, so I'm not hot. But if it most of the time it's too hot to do that in here with the server running and a, and two, two other machines running, I can stand the server in one machine, but not server in two machines most of the time. So. Uh, the last one I did last night, I had to shut it down because I, well, I didn't want to go to bed and I didn't want the heat and to listen to that machine while I was asleep. It'll wake me up sometimes. Uh, got up to 92.4 megabytes is what it ended up being, but it wasn't finished. Cut off, pro I don't know exactly how far it was from being finished, but from what I remember, probably another 5 or 10 minutes was left of actual you know, video time. So. But the one I'm doing today, it's still sitting at 4.6 megabytes, so it makes me worry that it's actually hung up. The output doesn't look like it's hung up. Yesterday I never saw anything past 0%. I do know that that percentage will move 
it'll actually start telling you how many bytes when it's working right it'll just tell you how many bytes it's processed so maybe this one is hanging up maybe it's not just all about the processor not being able to handle it I mean it's but it's sure hung up at a different spot that's for sure we'll see if it doesn't uh, go any further I'll just shut it down again and I'll probably just give up on it if, if I try it again I'll try it on my newer machine just to see if that would help but uh, you hate whenever you work you know you, you it's hard to get to everything like I'm just mumbling and jumbling and it's hard to get your mind clear you're not tired your throat's not dry and tired <laughs> and get one of these videos made and so once you get it right, you know, you don't want to lose it. So, <clears throat> even half right. So, and uh, I've had the same exact problems with every Windows uh, application I've tried as well. This is, this one, uh, GTK, or I call it GTK. It's actually record my desktop. It only works in Linux. It's only a Linux app. But, uh, I've had some even more, sometimes more um, aggravating problems. Oh, I forgot to show what, one of the what I was going, what I was talking about there. Here's the settings. There's GTK in that old machine, and this right here, 75% video quality. Okay, select the video quality of your recording. Lower quality will require more processing power, so it is recommended when recording on the fly. Use 100%. Well, I'm recording on the fly right now, but on that this machine, the one we're showing, I, that's not recording on the fly. Anyway, I messed around and messed around until I got it to work, and that's what worked. And I went down on the sound quality just because I thought that would be less intensive on the processor and it's you know you can't tell the difference just somebody talking if it was music maybe uh, you might hear the difference so that's the folders I'll keep t I'm talking about I make uh, home down videos GTK record my desktop that's the working directory that's my cache file temp directory I set that instead of change it from temp just you know like forward slash temp to that okay now here's what I've got going 75, 50, and then frames per second, 30. I do not encode on the fly. Zero compression, so that's why the files are pretty good size. I don't don't do any of the rest of that. Uh, what I'm doing is, and then the sound I leave to default, and I leave everything else on the, what's default. I don't follow the mouse because uh, it. When it, it actually doesn't work too well, on, but in some applications I've tried where it follows it pretty closely, it gets dizzying to watch, so I don't like that. <coughs> so, now what I have on my system that I'm trying right now on my newer system is 100%, 100%. Encode on the fly, you take off the compression, and then uh, full shots every frame. And I'm down to 10, I don't know what I just said, 10 frames. I've tried 10, I've tried 15, now I'm trying 5 frames per second because it's actually backwards to what you would think. That's why I started out talking about the frames per second and what in normal video recording 30 frames is optimal or more. And this, uh, to get the audio and video to sync, you actually go backwards from what you would think. So or what I, you know, what I've learned over the years. I used to do audio and video. I used to mix sound for bands back in the 80s and 90s, and uh, did quite a bit of video. I liked, always loved audio and video ever since I was a kid, and I, I did some, you know, uh, video work too. So uh, not near as much as I did sound, but I learned, uh, you know, during the analog days. So, but a lot of it's still the same. Um, so right now, I'm at five frames per second, encode on the fly, full shots every frame, and that's what I'm trying to. I was thinking that the full shots every frame might actually stop the dropout of the audio, but I don't think it's made any difference. This option should be enabled when recording 3D windows. It is also auto-enabled when recording a known 3D comp compositing window manager. Oh, okay. I don't have any of that 3D window compositing on that system. I don't own either one. I don't. It uses too many resources, and it's just kind of fluff, so I don't. I don't, uh, you know, I can do without it. 
some of it, it's kind of neat, but it bothers bothers me after a while anyway. Sometimes that would be like uh, well, I can't remember. Let's see. Let's see if what's in here. They they don't even actually. Fedora used to come with a bunch of that. To oh, that's not it. That's not not it. That's the standard stuff. I can't remember the name of. Uh, of any of the 3D window managers but oh there's one comp is right there you may have heard of that I don't have any of it turned on yeah there's a whole area for setting up setting up comp is and you can do all kinds of you can have it's really some of it's really neat looking you know you can have boxes can have a box in the middle that spins when you when you change different things and all that. And, uh, actually, I I, I I when I discovered uh, Linux, it was Genome Tube. It was set up just like this. This is Mate Desktop, which is a fork of Genome Two, and I loved it so much. And I can flip work so fast like that. Uh, I get sometimes I have everyone. All I have six. Uh, I call them desktops. It, it's technically how they call it uh, workspaces. I think, yeah, workspaces. Um, I put my Thunderbird right there. I don't have it run open right now because I wanted to not use the extra resources. And then I have a certain way I put everything. And then I uh, I can just flip when I open more stuff up like that. See, I I put <coughs> I can flip through real quick. So I'm going to close that remote desktop. That's actually using less resources. It was sticking at 25%. And now, well, I guess that makes sense. It's, uh, I went down to 5 frames per second. So, yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> There's a graphic readout of the four quad core, what it's using. It's hard for me to look at all four of those at the same time to see but I'm kind of gathering that it's not any of them jumping up to they had been jumping up to you know 96, 99, 90, 100 percent it rotates I see when I'm get to 70 yeah it looks like it's topping out about 75 so that's probably much better on the system on the you know system usage there and total memory being used is almost a gig of 3.7 gig so, yeah, it's kind of weird how, but but what this is basically, I guess, an average of the overall s CPU usage. And I'll tell you that that if that gets up above seventy five percent, you're you know it because the machine will slow down. You get up to ninety percent, and it'll be about just ninety ninety five percent. It'll pretty much freeze up uh, from whatever reason, you know, and. Uh, yeah, th uh, g this record my desktop using 25 megabyte. Is what it's actually using. So um, yeah, that's actually the best I've seen it on resource users while I'm trying to do the uh, render on the fly and all that. So I don't know how long I've gone, but I'm tired. So. You need to at least go over, over 10 minutes to see if your audio is going to drop out. It'll pretty well do all up to about 10 minutes without any trouble most every time. But, uh, let's just see. It may be wildly out of sync still. So, and that my if I that's one reason why I actually I would like to make you know more desktop videos and how tos and stuff and upload them, but it takes me so long to you know make one render one get make it get till I get it right render it uh, and all that and then then if you end up having to edit it on top of that you know you're, you're looking at two days work for 30 minute video so I generally decline but if you just make it and uh, you know and however long it takes to do it you're done with it then that would be the thing that'd be awesome so uh, there's some good pages 
that's the source their main home the beginning page there that's their uh, downloads yeah that's the downloads page that is what is that that's about sound recording that explains how do you set up jack and uh, also the, at the bottom there about ALSA like I said I looked open I have jack on here and I opened it up and it's just I've looked at it on and off for years over and over the years it's so complicated to set up I don't really feel like messing with it <coughs> it's supposed to be really good I have used it I've used it on some of these audio video Linux distros where it's pre-set up and I, it's just there and working I have used it some that way but when you gotta kinda set it all up yourself it takes it's a pretty good learning curve and this page is still on the source forge that is the manual page I think, yeah man page, this is the manual it tells you all the commands for uh, if you want to run it in the command line you can it's kind of, they can s it's the way they talk about it, it's a command line app with this that they made a couple of GUIs for so it's kind of like if you want to do the recovery business that I was talking about a minute ago and the and I'm doing it on the other machine you have to do that in the command line so you have to go here or somewhere to find the commands. So. Well, let's see into this test and uh, we'll see what happens. Alright, bye bye.